Hey guys, uh, I'm making the Banks Mild Ale today out of the uh, Hurricane Alex rainwater. So come over here and you can watch me do in. <laughs> here I learned something really important and that is if you've got a hundred degree day and you're going to do brew in a bag outside and you bring that water up to the where you think you need it to dough in to come back down to well I was shooting for 154 it's uh, a hundred degree day will keep it too steady I brought this water up to 160 and doughed in and I was just shocked it stayed at 160 it did not drop so I've been stirring it and stuff and now it's 153 so now I'll lit it up and put a blanket on it but um, oh hey you know what this could be the uh, temperature thing okay Okay, now I press the hold button on this thermometer so it will stay. And let's go back down to the brewmometer. Let's see, where is the brewmometer in the camera? Well, hang on, I'll just take the camera off the tripod. Okay, so put your macro. There's the temperature on the brewmometer. And here's the temperature on the CDN. In my mind, that's close enough for government work, I'd say. Can you see it good enough? I am just, it is so hot so, out here. Yeah, I had to come in and actually dry my face off and I'm just not gonna stay out there and try to film that because it's just too hot outside. Okay, so here's the Banks Mild Ale. Banks Mild Ale and my notes on it and I chose it for a couple of reasons one is because I read about Banks Mild Ale being a brew that was served in pubs in England uh, prior to World War II it was like the drink of choice so I thought you know that sounds interesting but but uh, the other reason why I chose this is because in my last brew in a bag video actually I think it was the first brew in a bag video um, Yarp PT uh, commented that I wouldn't be able to use brew in a bag with uh, unmalted grains and this has a half pound of flake barley so he and I have written back and forth since then and he said well that's probably not enough to worry about a half pound out of the whole grain bill but I still want to see I already bought it before he told me that so uh, I just wanted to see if the, the uh, flake barley would convert what they say is if you um, if you have unmalted grains, I hope I get this right. If you have unmalted grains, then they need to be in a mash with malted grains, or else they'll just give up their starch to the wort, but it won't convert to sugar. So that's what we were talking about. But this Banks Mild Ale, it has a half pound of flake barley, two and a half pounds of Munich malt, two and a half pounds of pale ale malt, and a half pound of Crystal 40 L malt. Sounds good, huh? But what's really cool is you put in, as soon as the boil starts, you put in a half pound of brown sugar. Now, Papazian says brown sugar is just plain granulated white sugar with a little bit of molasses added, and it actually just ferments out uh, to alcohol. So, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> then, uh, for the bittering hops, it says three quarters of an ounce of Fuggles, and a half ounce of Kent Goldings. Now my Kent Goldings, I actually am doing a different brew experiment and I'm using Styrian Goldings because I could get them in leaf hops. So, mm, hopefully that'll be all right. And that's all the hops. They all go in at the 60 minutes for the boil. So, 
I'm, I'm pretty excited about this if it turns out right because this is the Hurricane Alex Rainwater. This is Hurricane Alex Rainwater, so should make a, a pretty interesting thing. And I think that's it. TSA, that's the only thing I'm going to do with that thermometer test. I just I didn't even think about it. I was going to say no thermometer test because it's too damn hot. Oh, too darn hot out here. But now you see, it looked to me like the CDN thermometer, the one that you like the best, and the brewmometer that's on my kettle. It came on the kettle. Um, looked like they were pretty equal. I trust it okay. I mean, if I want to see a critical temperature, I'm going to I'm going to actually take the temperature. I'm not going to look at the dial. But if I'm if I'm in the ballpark, I think the dial shows me the ballpark. So, and like I keep saying. I'm learning that grains are very forgiving. Let's hope these grains are very forgiving that when I dough them in, the temperature didn't drop as much as I wanted. Uh, I know, I should get that beer smith or pro mash or beer tools pro that folks are so talking about. This will about. be my no, starch conversion test to see if the, uh, the flaked barley converted. The mash time is over. And I even captured a little piece of that flaked barley right there. So, you see how this is the brown color, it's nice, and this turned the dark. So the flaked barley is not converting yet, and this is after a 90 minute mash. So, let's let it go 30 more minutes, and I'll take another uh, iota 4 test, iodine test. Ah. Okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, so this is after two hours of mashing. I let it go another half hour, so it's been mashing two hours. The flake barley did not convert. Hey, I'm chilling the wart down on the uh, Banks Mild Ale made with Alex, Hurricane Alex rainwater. Here's the uh, wart chiller pre chiller, and I've got it in a my thermos bucket full of ice, ice water, and then it's feeding over to the regular wart chiller that's chilling the wart. It's working pretty good. Uh, I've got a big thermos container full of ice here, and I've already gone through about half the bag, putting it in the pre-chiller. Now mind you, it's 100 well, degrees so out here. I'm at the point in this brew where I'm chilling the wart, and I've got my fermenter down here with my stuff in it sanitizing. Oh, but I wanted to show you something. While I'm sanitizing my stuff in star sand, let's see if I can show you this. And I'm doing a star sand experiment here. I, uh, I've put, uh, I'm using reverse osmosis water in my sanitizer this time. And I'm soaking a, a clear glass in the sanitizer. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this glass out. I'm going to sit it on this hot wall over here. And I'm going to see if it turns out clear or if it turns out cloudy. So, hey guys. Here's the results. The, uh, the glass dried that had the star sand. I soaked it in star sand, but with reverse osmosis water. And there are no streaks, no spots, no nothing here. Such a macro. Nothing. Tried crystal clear.